Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. When we went through compound interest and we worked this out in our compound interest video, you'll notice that we ended up with more interest than actual 40% if we just look at it simply. 40% of $100 at the end of a year should be $40 and when we compound the interest we get more than $40 in interest. If I got $40 in interest on $100 my ending balance should be $140 exactly. We get $146.41 here. So we actually, if you think of this in terms of simple interest, we got what's called an effective rate of 46.41%. You can tell that because we got $46.41 and it was $100, so it's easy to see based on $100 there, right? So remember, our interest that we get is not only based on the interest rate that we're quoted, but also the amount of times that we compound per year. And so if I use a 40% interest rate and I compound annually or monthly or daily or weekly, I'm going to get different amounts here at the end of a year. And so if we want to compare all of those Simply, we compare them to the simple interest rate, and that's called the effective rate. So if I were to get simple interest and my accumulated value became $146.41, then this would be the equivalent simple interest. So our effective rate for compound interest helps us compare different types of compounding all in a similar format. It tells us what the equivalent simple interest rate is. We have two different formulas for effective rate depending on the type of compounding we're doing. So if we're doing discrete compounding, that's where we're compounding daily or weekly or monthly. We wait a period of time and then we compound and we wait a period of time and then we compound. Discrete compounding will have this formula of the quantity one plus r over n to the n minus one. You'll see this little r sub e. This looks like interest rate, but this is actually rate effective so this is our effective rate, so we know that this is different than just plain R. Our continuous compounding is when we use the A equals P times E to the RT, that's our formula for that, and our formula for the effective rate when using this formula is E to the R minus 1. Remember that E is a button on your scientific or graphing calculator. This is a constant that's about 2.7. So to get an accurate value for this, make sure you're actually using the E key on your scientific or graphing calculator to find these. Let's look at some examples. I've got my formulas here. We want to know which loan has a higher effective rate of interest. So I have a loan that has 12.9% interest and I have a loan that has 13% interest. So these are close, but they also are compounded differently. So the effective rates are not going to be exactly what's stated here. They'll be a little bit higher than what we're actually seeing. So let's go ahead and look if we have 12.9% annual rate compounded continuously. So compounded continuously tells me that I will use this formula here. You can tell because e to the the R is in the A equals PERT formula. It's kind of how you can tell this one is the compounding continuously effective rate. So here my effective rate is going to equal E to the 12.9% as a decimal would be 0 0.129 minus 1. And let's go ahead and round that to, let's say, three places will be sufficient for that one. If we round to three places, then we'll actually get an effective rate of 13 0.769%. So you can see we get a bit more, not quite a percent extra, but compounding continuously gives us close to an extra percent above the 12.9 quoted to us. 13% annual rate compounding monthly. So compounding monthly is a discrete, right? That's every so often. So we use the discrete formula, which is one plus R over N to the N. You can tell because this looks like the compounding monthly, we would use N is 12 here. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. So our effective rate of interest for this one is going to equal one plus my rate over N, we're compounding monthly, so N is 12 to the 12, we also have an n there in the exponent, minus 1. And if we plug that into the calculator and round to three places here, we get 13.803% interest. So if we're looking for which loan has a higher effective rate, then the one that compounds monthly at 13% has a higher effective rate than this 12.9 compounded continuously. Let's work through one more of these. Same thing, we wanna know which one has a higher effective rate of interest. One of them is 7.05% annual rate compounded quarterly, and one of them is a flat 7% annual rate compounded daily. Now, neither of these are continuous interest. Both of them are discrete every quarter, every day, and every so often means we use this formula here, the one plus R over N to the N minus one. So our effective rate for this one 
is going to be 1 plus, if we turn this into a decimal, that will be 0 0.0705 over compounded quarterly tells us that n is 4, 4 times per year, to the 4 minus 1. And if we round this to three places, we will get an effective interest rate of 7.2. 39%. Looking at our second one here, 7% annual rate compounded daily. So our effective rate using the same formula will be 1 plus 7% would be 0 0.07. Compounding daily, they didn't tell us otherwise, so we'll go ahead and assume 365 for daily. To the 365, and in two places in the formula, minus 1. If we plug that into our calculator and round to three places, we will actually get that this is 7.250% effective rate. So if we're looking for the one that has the higher effective rate, then the 7% compounded daily is going to be the one that has a higher rate. So something to watch out for. This rate is quoted to us as a higher rate. If we weren't aware of effective rate, we might look at 7% versus 7.05% and say, well, this is a higher rate. So if you're going to pay me this amount of interest, then I want this account versus this account. But depending on the compounding, it turns out this one with the lower quoted rate, because it's compounded more often, we actually get just a little bit higher effective rate. And this one, if we were doing a savings account or some sort of investment, this would be the one to go with over the compounded quarterly. Okay, hopefully this helps you with your effective rates of interest. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you in the next video.